operating the machine is quite easy. What you see here is the control panel of our Somoza machine. You have individual control of all parts of the machine, depending what the buttons are. Each component will start when you press on or off of the green button. This is your main on button. So when it's pressed uh, in and you press this one on, that the mold speed will start. If you press the filling speed, which is your hopper speed, if you press that on, it'll start. If you want it to stop, you stop. When you receive your machine, do not touch any of these uh, switches or programs here. This is pre-programmed from the manufacturer, so no need to do any setting over here. What th these numbers mean, it's the speed of your dial. So if you want fast, want, uh, uh, the mold speed to be at 42, it'll be at 42. If you want filling speed at 60, you can. You can also reduce it to, to 49. Once you find your formula of whatever product you are doing, if you want to decrease or increase the speed, everything is controlled independently. If you want to reduce it or speed it up. So how do you start the machine for the very first time? Well, our recommendation is as follows. You're first going to put your uh, filling uh, in the hopper. Do not start at that point. Then you're gonna uh, start your dough. Get your dough out first. Once your dough reaches the that point there, once it reaches that point, then you know that your dough is ready you can stop it then you want to start your filling number one get it that to go through and then your filling number two which is uh, once you start seeing come out of the dough that's when you stop it it's quite easy everything is independent that's these are the motors and they are all independently controlled okay the rest you have your power for the pump and now I'm going to tell you what is really special about this machine and why everything works so well. As you can see, there are four motors. They're all heavy duty and they um, have heavy duty chains. When using this machine, it's important to have the, the machines, your maintenance guy come in and uh, lightly grease the, the chains. Other than that, everything functions very well and they are heavy duty. You have one motor here that operates and controls the second filling device up here. And you will have the secondary motor on the back end that also operates and controls the first filling device over here. The main motor will uh, control and individually operate the midsection of the dough filling head. And this motor on the back controls the uh, mold, head, and flower. So what is great about our uh, machine is that it comes with its own cooling refrigeration system. It has the capability of cooling off your water and you can set the temperature of the water. It could be ice cold and it has its own refrigeration. Over here is where the water comes in. The user will take a um, water and fill it manually with either a cup, a glass, and you're going to fill it until you see uh, the water show here at the very top. You're going to fill the drum and it's going to circulate that water through the pump and it's going to take it to the machine. So you will have 
the water circulating ice water through the head continuously and monitored. It is a machine for high production, heavy duty production. Now I'm going to show you how to remove the mold from the machine in case you need to replace with another type mold. First we start off by removing the mold cover. There are a total of four screws. Two in the front and two in the back. When lifting and removing the mold, you need to make sure that this pin here is aligned ready for it to be lifted up. Otherwise, when the machine is working, this pin might be in the lock position. So you need to make sure it's here in order to release and remove the mold. As well, you will need to remove the uh, unlock the latch to access the mold in order to lift. When the machine has been in operation and it's still remaining at the end of the shift with dough, you need to start off by removing the rings. The first ring, normally you can remove with your hand. Although, because of the pressure, you might need to use the following tool to release the ring, such as so, and then finish unscrewing the inner center ring. Once you removed all the rings, what we are showing you is how to remove the rings for the end of the day for cleaning. So you, you want to remove the rings and this is the tool that comes with the machine. You want to do this at the end of production as soon as possible before the dough gets too hard in the machine. You definitely do not want to leave your dough inside the machine overnight. You, at the end of production, you need to do this in order for your machine to work correctly the next day. If you leave this dough overnight, it'll be extremely hard and dry, and dry which will give you a lot of difficulties to um, work with the machine. Once you've completed that, you want to try to remove the, the head. Try not to attempt to remove the screw first. It's easier if you remove the head. You will require Allen keys. And once the, all, all the screws are loose, you can remove the, the head safely. At this time, it'll be easier for you to remove the dough from the, the screw here on this part. And at this time, uh, you don't want to try to remove the pipe. You would need to remove the screw first. When ready to remove the auger or the screw, make sure that there is no leftover dough in here so that it doesn't get stuck with the screw here and not allowing it for it to come out. Now you're ready to release and remove the pipe. In order to do so, make sure it's clean uh, from any uh, product that's left over. And in order to release the pipe, you got to turn it clockwise, which is that way. And to lock the pipe when putting it back in, it's left. And you know that by if, uh, if you try to pull it, it won't come out. So in order to release it, right and remove the pipe. Now you can clean the rest of 
the Do chamber. You notice there's a keyway that came out from there. You see, this is one main part here that you need to be careful. This was done on purpose so that you can see that this keyway is easy to lose. And um, you need to be careful about that. Don't lose this keyway when you remove the black screw. This is where the keyway goes on the black screw. At this point here, we're going to show you how to remove the screw. Uh, you're going to take it and twist it so that way it comes out of its keyway and then pull it up. This is the keyway. When removing it, you got to remove it out of this uh, slot here. And as well, when putting it back in, you got to make sure that it falls into this place here and it's its slot keyway. After removing the hopper, you need to remove the inner piece first by starting by removing the pin. Over here in this section, you need a little bit more patience to remove this item. After the hopper is removed, we want to show you for demonstration that when you are inserting the screw of the hopper, that you align with that pin there when you're when you're putting it on and then you lock it by locking it and then you try to pull it up it won't come out that's how you know that the screw is locked in and how you remove it in order to remove the hopper you need to unscrew a total of one two three and four screws Removing the last screw. Once all four screws is removed, you can lift the hopper. Keep in mind as well to always pay attention to the O-ring that's here to not lose the O-ring. There are a total of two O-rings, one in this section and one on the intersection here, which we'll show you. So removing the O-ring, it's important that you wash the O-ring and clean the O-ring at the end of every shift. If you do not remove any leftover product, the following day it will be extremely hard and can cause machine damage. So this is considered the filler one, and this is the filler two. It is controlled by the control panel here, as in filling speed one and filling speed two. We are now going to remove, for cleaning, the dials of the filler two section. And this is how you do it. After removing all four, four dials, you can remove the plate And under that plate, there is a plastic cover that's also sealed by the O-ring. Again, please pay attention to the O-ring, not to lose the O-ring. And it's important to wash the O-ring at the end of the shift. At this stage, we're going to show you how to remove the inner filler uh, two. And normally, at this, uh, you have leftover product still inside the chamber. And what you want to do is use th this type of tool to pull up the parts. And once it's pulled out, then it's easier to access the other one. And the same thing goes to the other um, part. and then it makes it easy for cleaning at the end of the shift. Once our, all parts are removed from the block, you can actually remove and release the block like so for cleaning. You can clean the bottom and you can also clean the block. As well, continue to pay attention to your keyway here, not to lose your keyway.
Now we're going to show you how to put everything back once every part has been cleaned. Let's start off with the block. You want to try to align it. Putting it in nice and tight and it's ready for the O-rings. We can start off by putting the O-rings on. You have one O-ring and you also have the smaller O-ring. The key to adding the O-rings back on, making sure it's clean and not oily uh, or slippery, if the O-ring goes on here, the key to it is not to twist it or turn it. If you're finding that the O-ring keeps on slipping, it could be because you are spinning or turning the O-ring. Now, if you're finding this part here as you're putting it on, and this is not staying in its place, just take the O-ring back out, give it a little stretch to loosen it up a bit, and then you put it back on. While it's still stretch, it should be easier for you to put on the O-ring. At this stage, everything is nice, it's in order, and you want to put in the stars back on. The first star, again aligning with the keyway, you fit that in nicely. There is no particular way to put it on. And it's now locked in place. What's great about this machine versus other machines on the market is that when the product is coming through here, there is a two inch hole. This is a two inch hole that's being fed into the feeders right here, these stars. It also pushes in into a 22 millimeter pipe, which is the larger type pipes versus the ones that are on the market. That allows big chunks of product to be put in and for it not to get crushed. Okay, as you can see, it started to come back. Just give it a good stretch again. And once this is back into its place, we are going to put in the plastic mold plate. It's perfect. We're going to put the steel plate back on. Perfect. We're going to put on the rollers. We're going to put on the next roller. And the next. And the next. Very nice and tight, not too tight to strip the screw, just enough not to cause any leaks. Okay, hand tighten. Good. Now what you want to do here is make sure that the pin is in. After removing the hopper, you need to remove the inner piece first by starting by removing the pin. Over here in this section, you need a little bit more patience to remove this item. And the same way you take it out is the same way you put it in. This is not a perfect circle, so you got to kind of play around with it. And you got to show the, the hole. Um, you got to. Um, Align it with that hole there with that pin right there. And that's how you know you've uh, inserted this part correctly. Once it falls into place, the base will be touching the other part of the stainless steel there. Then you put in the pin. And you center the pin so that way you can put on the screw. Now we're gonna put the hopper back on and show you the proper way of doing it is you wanna first try to align the two ends of the bolts first and then connecting the other. Doing it this way 
will allow you to align it with the holes and for you not to play around with the hopper and shifting it from left to right so that the o-ring gets damaged right now it was easily placed and the holes are aligned and the o-ring is not damaged you want to put the screws back on and all four and tighten it and you're going to tighten this with the wrench so for the purpose of this video, we have been showing you all the areas to remove the screws and to put it on and to remove it. But the machine does come with the tools that you should be doing this, not by hand. Of course, we're doing this for video purposes, but with its own proper tools. So for an example, this one here, the four screws, you want to use your tools and tighten it properly as it should. Now we're going to put the screw, the hopper screw on. As you can see, there's the pin, and we're going to align it with the pin. When putting it back, back in, we're going to find the locking spot. It falls into place, and you know it's in. When you try to pull it out, it won't come out. Now it's locked. Now we're going to insert the pipe. And when inserting the pipe, your goal is to align with that pin right in the center. You see that pin at the very end? That's the locking pin for the pipe. When you insert the pipe, you want to align the pipe in this manner here so that you can get a connection with the pin. This part here, at the very end, the pin will enter into the cavity and then you're going to lock it this way. So now we insert the pipe. Over here you see the pipe come through, you're going to find the pin and lock it. And it gets twisted at the end, it's locked, and now it's safe. We know the pipe is locked in because when you try to pull it out, it doesn't come out. So now the pipe is locked in tight where it should be. Now we're going to put in the screw, and at the same time, keep in mind, you need to put the keyway back on. It's also a good idea to add some food grease so that the keyway stays on there and it helps when removing and putting it back on and that way it can stay there nice and tight at the same time if you find that your keyway is not uh, on there properly you can give it a tap with a little hammer and now it's ready to insert into the machine the hammer does also come with the kit as you can see inside the chamber that is the path there of the keyway when inserting the black screw. Okay now we are inserting the screw and you're going to align the keyway with its slot and once it's in very gently falls into place no need to struggle or now you want to insert the auger housing keeping in mind to have these two parts pointing upwards when inserting the housing being careful not to damage the auger S so setting it into place you want to tighten it with the allen key and you have one two and three screws to tighten here's a quick note you can also put the screw housing this direction here you can put it straight up or sideways when putting it on putting it sideways will be better so that way it doesn't bend the holes that's the recommended way to put the second part you want to put the copper in away from the thread you can hear a little click it's nice and tight copper end goes in first hand tighten 
And then you're gonna put the second last piece, which is this one here. That fits right in. And then your lock ring is the last one. And you can tell it's your lock ring because it has a flat end. You're gonna hand tighten everything again. All right. And that's how you assemble that part. After, you can just put in your pipes, your hoses on each end. And now we're gonna show you how to put on the mold. When putting the mold back on, you wanna align the pin. Okay, and you wanna put the pin locked in right there. And you wanna leave it centered. And when, in the, when it starts, it'll lock in by itself. And by pushing it forwards, you lock it with the pin there. Next, you wanna put the cover on. Putting the cover on, you'll notice that there's four holes. One, two, finish tightening the cover with the wrench on all four sides. Okay, turning on the pump will also make the water come out. After a few days, uh, you do want to change the water from the pump. And uh, the way to do that, because the water is circulating, you want to just uh, pull out the holes and you're going to start the machine and when starting the machine the water will drain out to the bucket and once that's done you can pour in new uh, water so this is the old water and why you want to do that is so that the the machine is not working with old water and you don't want it to smell after um, when you want to refill the tank just grab a jug of water and you're going to pour it in here until you see a little bit of water coming out here. That's when you stop. Okay, and uh, we're gonna stop here. That's really nice. Oh, you make <laughs> you? How can you eat this one? <laughs> I thought I was going to go. See, George, now yeah. you're everything. Perfect. Very like good. filling slow. Yeah. Do fast. You have the right. If it, if it do slow, yeah. then like. You know, a little bit like uh, and the filling. Like, like, yeah. It's not.